Hey guys, so in this video I want to talk about my experience using this ND Cine 4K monitor and I'm going to show you a little behind the scenes of me working and using this actually out in the field in a real job. The reason why I'm doing this video uh, is because a lot of people have been actually asking me about what's this little monitor you have with you. I've been using this for the last three months. I've had it actually for a little bit longer uh, and uh, if you want to know my opinion, I think it sucks that I didn't know about this monitor sooner. <laughs> yeah, well, basically what I mean is that it's it's a great monitor and unfortunately I can, I kind of put it aside. When I first got this in the mail, I honestly just thought this was like a cheap knockoff of the small HD focus monitor uh, because it does kind of look similar, especially this arm here. Um, and so I just just wasn't interested in, in, uh, in a cheap knockoff. But it actually, aside from this kind of similarity, this the way you mount it, it's actually quite a bit of a different monitor. So the biggest difference uh, between this monitor and the small HD is the brightness. This one not being as bright as a small HD one. Uh, now, in my experience though, I've used this in all kinds of lighting situations, indoors and outdoors, even and shooting in South America and like you know blistering uh, hot summer days, and uh, I had no problems really seeing it. And that's because it, they uh, it's it's fairly bright on its own, but they also provide you. Uh, there's a little bit of sunshade, sun hood that you can apply on this. Now, small HD, like I said, is brighter. It's going to be a little, more, a little bit better, you know, to see in, in broad daylight. That's about it. But on the other side, actually, the this monitor has higher resolution than the small HD one. This is actually full HD, even though it's a 5-inch display. So you're really seeing all that nice, crisp detail. The obvious similarity is just in the build. And what I mean by that is mainly this kind of an arm that you use to attach it to your camera. Uh, pretty much identical to the small HD one and it, they also give you a cold shoe mount up here so you can attach your other accessories or microphone that uh, you can't attach anymore because your hatch mount on your camera is now occupied. Uh, but the good thing about this mount is that you can use this easily to kind of flip the camera, I mean the monitor, and then you can use this to kind of get selfie shots uh, of yourself. Uh, and when you're doing that, you're most likely not going to be using the, the hood, uh, but also you want to then flip the image because uh, this monitor, unlike the small HD one, will not automatically flip the image for you when you flip the monitor. Now, it's not a problem. I basically just set it to my uh, custom button four. The, you know, there's four custom buttons. You can and assign different functions to it. As, I, as you can see, I flipped it and with just a click, uh, or three clicks actually of the button, you can cycle through the different flip modes. So this is the kind of mirror mode. So the image is actually flipped f uh, vertically, but not horizontally. And then they have like a full flip, horizontal and vertical. Um, which I think for selfie shots is not as good uh, to use. And then again, you click it back and then uh, it just goes back to its regular uh, you know, orientation. So it's great for that. And I think this is especially a great monitor if you're shooting with like what I have up here, Sony A6500, A6300, even, even like the, you know, pretty much any Sony DSLMs, um, A7S um, 3 or, or 2, or soon to be 3. Uh, hopefully coming out, but anyways, all any of those cameras, you know, A7R3, um, because none of those cameras, you know, wish Sony would fix that, but none of those Sony cameras have a, a LCD that actually will, you know, flip to the other side so you can actually see yourself. Uh, but yet, otherwise, these cameras are really great for vlogging uh, kind of setups because they have pretty good, reliable autofocus, you know, nice image profile. They're fairly small cameras, all that stuff. Um, another thing actually I like about this is um, the size and it's built. It's not metal, so it is kind of plasticky feeling, but the upside of that is that it's very light. It's actually super light, this monitor. Like when you take off the battery, it's pretty much all the weight that you're feeling is of the battery. Otherwise, you really don't feel much of a difference when you mount this monitor on your camera. Um, and that's because, again, because it's not a, uh, not a big uh, monitor. Before, I kind of used to use the, the Atomos Shogun, for example, or with this, uh, or some of my other monitors, but you know, most of them are going to be seven inches if you want that 1080 quality. Uh, 1080p, I mean, resolution. And so this one, it's nice to have that resolution, but in this five inch small kind of form factor, it just makes it a lot easier to run and gun with this or using it as a, as a vlogging camera. Now, yes, it is built out of plastic. Does that mean it's not as durable as uh, some like a metal, you know, built uh, monitor? Maybe, maybe yes, maybe don't no. I mean, I think at the end of the day, really what you're worried about is not so much the body, but the screen. You know, all the monitors have a screen that's fragile. I mean, if you drop this thing and the, the screen hits something, then the screen is going to break and then there, there goes your monitor. I wouldn't really so much worry about the, the build of this, uh, like I said, the, of the, the body of the monitor. Uh, I do like the fact that they added uh, a quarter 20, you know, thread on the side here, on the bottom. 
and on the top you have on the sides here uh, on the left side you have your uh, power in DC in 12 volt and you actually have DC out uh, 8 volt and that's great because they also provide you with a little cable and a dummy battery so you can use this this basically the Sony NPF style batteries uh, you can use it to um, you know to power your camera with like the smaller one that I have up here I can power the monitor and the camera for the Sony a6500 for around two and a half hours when you put like the, the, the NPF let's say 970 batteries it can go even, even sometimes it will go up to almost five hours so pretty nice the fact that you don't no longer have to switch out all these little batteries in these cameras um, and you can power it and you can even see the you know how much battery you have left up here uh, in, in your camera will actually show you how much battery is in there um, so that's a good thing and that's one of the, the, the things is because uh, th that I maybe don't like about this monitor is the battery indicator in the monitor itself is not very accurate the kind of it pretty much like you see here it's showing me it's stuck at 80% I think it's also depending on which batteries you're using I'm using these cheap off-market batteries so that's probably why but again the camera is able to show me so uh, it's showing me 35% right now um, so yeah, it's nice kind of a setup when you're doing vlogging, run and gunning kind of filmmaking. Like I said, I've used this on a music video shoot, on a film shoot, uh, and works, you know, indoors, outdoors, all that stuff. Great overall monitor, like it's a nice image quality. What I also love is this kind of con f custom functions <laughs> that you can get on this monitor. And, uh, and you can kind of assign them to these buttons. So uh, first button, I have my overexposure warning. So basically, it's like a, you could say zebra. It's going to show you which spots are over, completely overexposed. Uh, function two is false color. False color, if you guys have been to any of my filmmaking seminars or if you watch some of my videos, you know I love false color. It's the best way to judge your exposure, especially creatively when you're like shooting on a film where you don't want the f overall average you know, of your image to be perfectly exposed. You want some maybe really dark and really bright spots in your image, but you care about seeing exactly which part of the image is at what level. False color is the way to go. I wish every monitor had it. Well, this one does, and uh, I'm really happy with it. Um, another function here is that you can have the histogram. You know, I use it sometimes, but not really. It's not the best way, I think, of judging exposure. Uh, and then another here custom button for is the flipping options. I can flip it. Um, now, uh, you can also assign other functions. You can have, uh, you know, uh, focus peaking with this. Um, there's Zebra. There's, uh, there's actually quite a bit of functionality and options that you can uh, still access them either through the menu or just assign them to one of the custom buttons. Uh, and you can do anamorphic even, you can actually zoom in or squeeze your image anamorphically, which is really cool if you're shooting with anamorphic lenses. Another thing I really like about this monitor is that it has a headphone jack up here. So again, if you're shooting with the uh, Sony a6300 or 6500 and you don't, uh, you don't have a way of monitoring basically your audio that you're getting into the camera, well, boom, plug in the headphones here and now you can monitor the audio. And like I said, because of the culture mode up here, for example, you can attach your, your uh, like a nice you know, microphone. So you can still actually get really good audio uh, with this whole setup and it's fairly small. So again, good for vlogging and that kind of stuff. Now, the thing I like the most about this monitor is probably its price. It's only $180. I, I mean, that's that's pretty much all I, I, I should have to say to you guys. $180, like just go grab grab this monitor. Regardless whether you have this camera or you might get it in the future or maybe some other uh, camera where you need a you know, good monitor get it amazing image quality it's yeah it's not the brightest monitor but still plenty of brightness like i said for my use and uh, and it's got all these pro features and it's 180 dollars did i say that <laughs> another function that this monitor has that again many even like big expensive monitors don't have is the fact that it actually accepts native 4k signal so if your camera only outputs let's say in 4k and they can't down convert to 1080p well this monitor will actually take it in there and, and you can view the signal really nicely uh, and when you use the zoom function, you can actually see pixel to pixel the, all the details. So you're probably wondering, okay, it's all great and everything, but what's what sucks about it? And there isn't much, but there are two things for me at least that were really bugging me. This little release here, it's it's okay, but like it's it basically there's nothing in there. There's no like a rubber stopper or even like these kind of you know like a like a like a screw with like these kind of grippy kind of teeth on it. So you can just lightly tighten this and make sure that this stays in there. You kind of have to tighten it really hard. But then if you do, then for example, you see if I want to move it further, it doesn't want to go that, that well because it's really, you know, really tight. At the same time, if I start pushing it in the other position and then eventually we'll just go loose and then it's like really loose. 
So then you have to constantly go in and adjust the screw. So that's one thing I wish they, they f would fix. I already I think I know how I'm going to fix it. Just add a little rubber washer there and that should be fine. Uh, the other thing I don't like about it is the, um, the battery release. It might seem like a really stupid thing, but trust me, when I was shooting these uh, projects, when I used this monitor on there, whenever I had an assistant, I was always like, hey, can you help me exchange out the battery? Because pretty much every time I would try to take out the battery myself, I would like clip my, my you know fingertip and it hurts a lot. The reason is because they created this little, the, the battery release like right there where the battery is. And obviously when you press that, you have to pull the battery out. Uh, and so it's really hard to do that without then as you as the battery comes loose, it just goes here and it snaps your finger in between the, the this edge here. Uh, I wish they would have done like a button maybe here on the top, uh, like for example, like the Atomos recorders have uh, and monitors, you know, just here on the top where you press the, the release and then you can slide the, the battery out. Whereas now, if I attempt to remove it now, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I might be injuring myself just for you guys. So let me see. See, I'm pressing the button and now to release the battery, I got to push it out. And again, it didn't hurt that much, but it is, it's like, it's just annoying. I don't know how to say it, but yeah, that's the annoying thing about it is that, uh, this battery release might not be a big thing for some of you guys. For some of you might be, uh, again, it's up to you starting it up here. I press the button. This is how long it takes to boot up. It's, it's fairly, fairly quick. Um, and then uh, actually another th question I had on one of my videos where I was using this is somebody noticed that there was lag in there in the video and yes there is lag but it depends how you're using it and it has actually nothing to do with the monitor it's basically the limitations of HDMI see here if I move the camera you know or if I move my hand here you will not see really any lag if there is it's like so minimal again your eyes are not going to perceive it where you are going to notice some slight lag is when you're outputting 4K signal. And that's, again, not the fault of the monitor, it's just the HDMI protocol. HDMI cable, there is a delay when it sends that amount of data. So if I go in here to my menu and change the signal now to 4K. And now, if I move it, you'll probably notice there's a slight lag there. So there's a bit of a delay, right? As you notice here. So that's the... Um, that's one thing to kind of keep in mind is that there is going to be delay, but again, it's not because of the monitor, it's the HDMI thing. So that's, that's why for like really high end monitors and cameras, you really want to avoid using HDMI. SDI is the way to go. HDMI is just, it's not a, uh, it's a consumer, you know, uh, connection uh, to connect your TV to a, to a, you know, Blu-ray player or something like that. Well, you don't really care that there's a slight delay. Uh, not only that, but you know, that one thing I always complain about the Sony, you know, cameras in particular is that they use that horrible micro uh, HDMI connection, which is so flimsy that this was the biggest problem I had. This thing would move, or we broke a bunch of these cables on occasion. So probably next thing I'm going to get is a little of um, cage. There's actually one that I'm eyeing from small small rig, I believe it is, uh, where they have this little cage which doesn't really add to the overall size or weight. It looks like of the camera because I do like to keep the camera small, but it gives you a pinch here for your HDMI cable. Uh, so if I do that and I get that upgrade and I like it, I'll probably do a video about it for you guys. But anyways, yeah, if you're looking for a monitor or something, you know, to fix up some certain problems with this camera, like the, you know, crappy LCD, you know, or the fact that you have no, no way to monitor audio or, or also the fact that you have to exchange these batteries constantly in these cameras. Well, this one monitor fixes all these problems for you. So get it again 180 bucks there's not much else that i should have to say to you guys to convince you uh anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did you know smash that like button share the video with others uh, and uh, subscribe and if you have subscribed already you're probably not getting notified about my videos and that's because youtube just recently admitted that if you subscribe to a youtube channel you're not going to be notified about their videos i don't know why they would then have a subscribe button there you want you to subscribe and then hit that bell notification. Then they'll actually notify you when I'm uploading a new video. So uh, there's a lot of videos I upload. And a lot of you I know have been missing on those videos. So hit that bell notification and this will actually be notified when I upload a new video. Anyways, my, again, my, my name is Tom Antos and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.